How's everybody doing tonight? Good, good. I want to tell you guys something. When Alex and I had that first conversation about him tithing, anxiety. He looked at me and he went, that's my cigarette money. <laughs> what am I going to do? My answer was, not smoke. <laughs> Just a thought. So I declare a decree right now that Alex will quit smoking. And that money that he's spending on those cigarettes will be invested into somebody's life. In Jesus' name, amen. I <laughs> got you. You're welcome. All right. So I just got a question for you guys tonight. How many of you have troubles and worries and anxiety and just bills, and things that you're just not sure are going to be taken care of. How many of you? Well, one or two, yeah, a couple of you out there, huh? So I'm not going to drag this on. I'm not going to go into a whole big spiel about it. I get asked daily, and I do mean it, daily. But you don't understand. I've got this, and I've got that. This book right here tells us how to handle all of it. All the way down to where our food and our clothes, how everything's going to come to us. It tells us. And we complicate it so much. Don't tell Pastor Lonnie, okay? We're going to talk about something that nobody ever talks about up here. Kiss. <laughs> I don't know if you're allowed to talk about kiss from up here. It's usually something that a husband and wife save to talk about. But I want you to take this word tonight and I want you to look at it a little bit different. I want you to look at it as keep it short and simple. Yeah, you're right. It's normally said another way. <laughs> but I'm not trying to get sat down from preaching, okay? <laughs> Keep it short and simple. We stress out and make these little tiny problems into these huge ordeals. We make things so big that it just becomes overwhelming. The truth of the matter is, God's got you. He's God. Do you think there's any problem in the world, any situation that's too big for him? Matthew 6, 25. We're going to read a little bit of scripture, and then we're going to talk about a little bit of scripture, okay? Therefore, I tell you, don't worry about your life. He just told us, right? Don't worry about it. What you will eat or drink or about your body. He's telling you right there. Don't worry about being hungry. Don't worry about being thirsty. Don't worry about being sick. What you will wear. It is not life. Is not life more than food? And the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns. And yet, your heavenly Father feeds them. Okay, look, guys. Takes care of the birds. The birds. Okay? Do not think he'll take care of us. Oh. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? We could take hours away, but we can't add hours by worrying. He didn't create us for that. We bring that. 
And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all of his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which he is here today, and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? If he doesn't, if, okay, I want you guys to go here with me, okay? I want you to imagine a field full of dead grass, okay? No life to it, just dead grass. And in the middle of that dead grass, is just one little sprig of green. Now when the fire comes, it will burn out all that dead grass. But that one little sprig of green will still be there. Do you guys get that? Nobody got it. All right. Let me break it down a little more gently, okay? All the worrying and all the stress causes nothing to your body besides sickness and death. Right? That one little sprig of grass is that faith. That one little grass leaf of faith is all you need to live. And it will continue to grow. Trials and tribulations, earthly things cannot kill that. Fire cannot burn that away. But fire can burn away all the dead. Fire is not a bad thing. Let it burn out all that dead grass so that you can have new growth. So don't, so do not worry saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all the things will be given to you as well. Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. That's it. Let's go home. You guys ready? Let's keep it simple. All right. I'm just joking. We're not going home. <laughs> First Peter 5, 7. Cast all your anxieties on him. Because he cares for you. He tells us, give me your problems. Give me your troubles. Give me your anxiety. I care for you enough that I will take care of it. Proverbs 23, 4. For those of us that think that if we just work long enough hours... And we get two and three jobs. We can pay more and more bills. Don't wear yourself out to get rich. Do not trust your own cleverness. It's, listen, I woke up this morning with no, not having no idea what I was going to get up here and say. No idea. Then I had a wonderful conversation with Adam. And I think he wanted to go eat pizza after tonight. So he said, let's keep it simple. And we went with Kiss. And then God started downloading that we have a whole society of people that worry and stress so much when he's told us not to do that. We should be enjoying each other. We should be enjoying our time together. 
We should be stopping and looking at the flowers that he's created and the birds that are singing and the change of seasons. But we don't. We stress because the rain's coming. We stress because, oh, I haven't lost 10 pounds that I thought I was going to lose. We stress because we got different things coming in our lives. We stress over the little silliest things. Philippians 4, 6. Let's just back it up a little bit more with some more scripture, huh? Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer, petition, and thanksgiving, present your requests to God. So what is he telling you there? What is he saying? Don't worry. Talk to him. Present your request to God. Okay. I got some things coming up. You know, you already know, God. But with a heart of thanksgiving, we approach him with that. And we say, thank you ahead of time for taking care of this. Because I know that you've got me. He didn't create us to go through struggle. He created us to have a relationship of love. Things that we go through, everything is for a lesson to be learned and everything to be glorified. But he didn't create us for problems. I didn't create my children so that they could go through struggle. How much greater is he? He didn't create the universe so we could go through stuff. He created us for love. First Corinthians 10, 13. Do not be anxious. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. He will provide a way out so that you can endure it. What is the way out? He is the way. That's right. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. That's our way out. We go back to what he told us in Philippians. Come back and have a relationship with him. If your children... How many of you in here are parents? All right. There's a lot of baby makers out there. If your children tell you what they've gotten their self into, you can help them out, right? You have that conversation with them, right? He's God. He knows what we're doing. But he wants us to come to him. He wants us to ask him to help us. He wants us to come to him with a grateful heart, already knowing that he's there. You know, you guys are a real quiet crowd tonight. Is that what it is? You spellbound? <laughs> Matthew 7, 7, 11. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open to you. I'll be seeking all the time. Even when you're told to write 500 
sentences about something that you don't think you should be writing 500 sentences. There's a lesson in it. He is involved. Everything that happens in your life, he is involved. For everyone who asks, receives. Okay. He says it. For everyone who asks, receives. We know that our God is not a liar. He's just telling us, have a relationship with me. Come talk to me and ask me. Now, we might be asking for a million dollar check. And we might not get that million dollar check because I've asked. I want to let you know that. And the truth of the matter is, is what he, what I received from him, I couldn't handle a million dollars at this point in my lifetime. I couldn't. But he's given me something much greater than that million dollar check. He's given me the opportunity to love. He's given me the opportunity to touch lives. He's given me the opportunity to be mother to many, many, many. That's way worth way more than a million dollars. I will never be poor because I'm rich with love. Where was I at? For everyone who asks, receives. The one who seeks, finds. So, sitting on the couch, watching the next 48, hanging out. You think you're going to find Jesus right there? What do you think you need to do? Seek him out. Open your Bible. Get on Esword. I'll tell you this. You can find him on Saturday morning at the park with the hot dog ministry. He's right there. You can find him in Dave Smith's heart when he's trying to save a life out there. He's right there. You can find him in Sharon when she's ministering to somebody. He's right there. You can find him in Alex. You can find him in this worship team up here. You can seek him everywhere. At every minute of the day. I find him in my dreams a lot. And to the one who knocks, the door is open. I think we should all knock. Hello? Jesus is here. Thank you, Jesus. Which of you, if your son asked for bread, would give him a stone? I don't care. I got to tell you, being a mother of so many children, my kids have asked me for some pretty crazy stuff. Okay? And I can't tell you that my word to them has always been yes. I remember my son being 15 years old and coming home and asking me for a BMW. (laughs) Probably not what's going to happen ever in his lifetime will be me giving him a BMW. Right? I was able to give him a Cadillac. Love that child. (laughs) Probably shouldn't have done that either. He wrecked it. (laughs) Again, love that child. (laughs) But I have never given my children, when they've asked for something, a stone. When they've asked for food, said no. Right? Those are our children. We're going to give them what's best for them, right? 
Or if he asks for a fish, you will give him a snake? I'm not touching a snake, people. If you then... Oh, why does it say that like that? If you then, though, are evil, how know how to give good gifts to your children. I gave him a Cadillac. It wasn't a BMW, but it was a Cadillac. It was a good gift, right? And me being of flesh, I'm not always perfect, so I'm not always right where I stand, right? I'm not God by no means. So if me being of evil know how to give good gifts to my children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask? So, on Good Friday service every year, we bring in the wooden cross, and we write down our burdens, and we nail them to the cross. And it's kind of this thing that we do, just a representation of just giving things over, right? That shouldn't happen just one day a year. That should happen every day continuously. I have been driving down 80 and hit that Marconi curb, and traffic has just been so bad, and I have prayed, and I have asked God, God, just open up the sea, the traffic, just like you have for, Mo, or for Moses, and guess what? I made it to where I needed to be on time. It was a miracle, I'm telling you, but that traffic opened up. It's just that simple. We can petition for what we need. Now, there's a difference between needs and wants, family. Again, we want that million dollars, but we really only need the roof over our heads, the food in our bellies, the clothes on our backs, and the love of each other. So, tonight, as I'm... We're going to go home early. Look at that, Adam. We get to go home early. I'm telling you, Adam was praying real hard for this today. Tonight, as we get ready to wrap up, I want you guys to think about those burdens that you're carrying with you. Those things that you're just anxiety-ridden about. I want you to really think about those things. And I want you to leave them here tonight. Leave them here. And don't pick them back up. Give them to God. As much as when my children are little, even to this day that my children are grown up and moved out, I need them to need me. It gives me purpose. It gives me a sense of Love and a sense of belonging. So he needs you to need him. He needs you to be free of your anxiety and your worries so that we can have healthy bodies and healthy spirits and healthy minds. Because we can't go out there and spread his love and his word if we're so sick with our own worry. How does that look when we're walking around going, oh, Jesus loves you. Oh, my God, how am I going to pay my bills? Oh, don't worry about it. Give it to God. Oh, my God, my car payment's due. Oh, you know what I'm saying? What hypocrites are we? Right? We have to have blind faith. We have to just know that we know because we know that he loves us and he's going to take care of it. I was walking around with 200 and something cysts in my stomach. I knew he was going to take care of it. We knew it because we knew it because we knew it. And everything that you guys are carrying with you, he wants to take care of. And he's God. He can take care of it. Might not be the way that you want it to be, but he will handle it. 
And how arrogant of us to tell him how he should do it. I don't know about you guys, but when my kids tell me how to raise them, I usually do the opposite. (laughs) Right? So tonight when you leave this, whatever it is, whatever your burdens are, I want you to leave them for him to handle in the way that he sees fit. Father God, we just glorify you and we thank you. We thank you for this family here tonight, Father God. And we thank you that we can petition you. Father, we thank you that Jesus came on your behalf for each and every one of us, Father God. Father, we just thank you that it is a finished work and that we are healed because of you. We are healed in your name. The Father, that we are set free because of what your son did for us, Jesus. And we thank you for that. We thank you for the ability to just come to you and talk to you like our father. We praise you, Jesus. Father, tonight as we get ready to go for the rest, through the rest of our week, God, we just ask that our burdens and our troubles just be with you, God, and that you just release us from them. We declare and decree your life, your healing, your blood, your glory to each and every one of our lives tonight, Father God, and we stand in that healing. We stand in that faithfulness knowing that you are going to take care of it, God, that our bills are not a burden to us anymore, Father God, because you will provide our needs. All of our needs, God, are provided through you, And we're going to just have blind faith, knowing that you're going to provide all those needs tonight, Father God. And healing is going to take place in our bodies, God. We thank you for that healing. And life is going to go smooth. And new seasons are going to start, Father God. And we're going to enjoy those seasons in our life, Father God. We thank you for those seasons. We thank you. We glorify you. We praise you. And Father, as some of our family is out tonight visiting with their families. Father, we just ask that that they just enjoy their time together and that Pastor Lonnie has a time of rest and restoration and that he is filled up with so much of you, God, that you just fill him with your strength, healing to your body. (laughs) Father God, I just glorify you and I praise you. Father God, tonight is Patrick and Char or with their family and their mourning tonight, Father God. I ask that, that that mourning take a different turn, Father God, and it be a time of celebration and a time of love. Father, for our brothers and sisters that are out there cold and hungry tonight, Father God, I ask that you fill them up. You send manna from heaven, God. Father, as the storm comes in, I ask that there's shelter provided to the ones that don't have a home, Father God. Father, I thank you, and I just ask that each and every person in Grace House tonight, that the chains just be broken, like we sang about tonight, Father God. Those chains are broken, that relationships are healed, that families are healed and restored, Father God, that friendships are restored, Father God. Father God, I thank you for Dana and all that he is, God. And I thank you for going before him and providing exactly what he needs. And that's health, God. We glorify you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Come have communion, please.